what we're looking at is the 4.7's Prion 2, and there's a reddish, pinkish Prion 1 here as well. A uh, fun way to think about it or to remember the difference between the P2 and the P1 is the Prion 2's take two AAA batteries and the P1's or Prion 1's only take one AAA battery. We're going to get into pricing and lumens and stuff, but not too much uh, because it's currently 2017 and there actually is a new or there are new Prions out of both P2 and P1. Uh, those have what the president, David Chow, referred to as sub-millimeter cuts, where apparently it's a little bit easier to grip onto, not as slippery, but and I do plan on buying those. But this is the 2014-2012 version. Um, so we'll just go ahead and throw the price out. At the time I got these, the P2s were about 40 bucks, and the P1s were about 30 uh, now it's hard to find them, so um, they've went up in, in price, I guess it goes without saying. So let's just take a look at the box real quick. So this is, like I said, around 2012, 2014 when they did the rebranding with the new logo. Well, I guess you can pause on this on the specs here. It's one, around one ounce for a pen light that puts out 192 lumens. That's awesome. All right, so we're going to get rid of the box, but let's go ahead and I'm going to roll in a, another flashlight occasionally to make some points. So this video is all about the 4.7s Prions, but I will roll in this micro stream or not a micro stream, but a stream light stylus pro. I also have the micro stream. Speaking of shout out to the micro stream, the flashlight that got me into flashlights. But anyway, there's only one thing that's cooler about this flashlight in my opinion over this over the prions and that is there is a momentary function and what that means is i can slightly press and the flashlight will come on i don't have to click it in so momentary again don't have to click it just comes on so it's just real quick like oh there's my keys off the, the prions do not do that there's no momentary you have to click for it to come on we're about to get into the user interface, and that's why I wanted to bring this streamline up, because there's just the momentary function, which I love, and you turn it on and that's it. I could hand this to my dad, and my dad would be, you know, he knows how to hit, hit a tail cap, and good. There's no functions where this one you kind of have to explain how the user interface works. But anyway, we're going to get into it. It's pretty simple. So there's two ways to get through the user interface. You can either do the hard clicks, or the soft clicks. So if, if you notice the modes are changing but you're not hearing the clicks, just know I'm doing soft clicks. If you wanna hear an audible click, you can totally do that. I wonder if these batteries are dead. Check that out. On camera, batteries die. Right, right, am I crazy? Am I crazy? Let's check it, let's tighten this up. You can unscrew both the emitter head as well as the tail cap. And we're gonna talk about this. Check this out, guys. This is gonna be so fun. We got tail caps, we got we got additional bodies. This is gonna be a fun video. Look at all this four sevens pre-on goodies we have. So let's go ahead. This is how I change the battery. I prefer to take the emitter head off. And I'm always careful on the threads. Why? Because you know, it's aluminum. Um, emitter head. Very cool. And you can swap out emitter heads, which as you can probably already guess, but you know, I could go for this, for this look if I really wanted to. Why haven't I? Um, I don't know. Well, I guess we'll talk about that. So let's see what we're running. We're running two Duracells. Um, are they both dead? Who knows? I guess I can check those later. But I have a new Duracell right here. And you might be like, where are you pulling these batteries from? I don't ask bro, I just happened to have new batteries there. I almost, to be honest with you, I kind of expected one of these flashlights to fail, or the batteries to fail anyway. So I had just had them on standby, honestly. Okay, so we should be. All right, so let's jump into the user interface and then we will talk about the lumens. So let's go ahead and use my Spider-Man colorway. I should be showcasing this one because it's pretty unique. I'm sure there's some people out there who could recreate this. You probably have the body parts, the pre-owned body parts to, to make this, but I like to call it my Spider-Man colorway. As you can see, red with the black webs and then the blue accents. 
pretty pretty cool. You are now familiar with the hard click versus the soft click. But here we go. So here is, you turn it on, it's going to start low mode. Low mode is two lumens. In my opinion, this is good for trying to read something. You don't want to, you know, blow your pupils out, ruin your night vision. So that's what low is. So I'm going to soft click to the next mode, which is medium. So now medium on the Prion 2 is around 26 lumens. The P1, Prion 1, running only one AAA battery is a little less powerful. It actually has the, the same low mode of two lumens. The medium is actually around 10 lumens. Take what you want to from this. This is about 26 lumens. This is about 10 lumens. They kind of serve the same purpose if, it, if that just is enough, you pop it to medium, and that's just what I call like standard flashlight mode. It's gonna like serve you well. And then we get to the last mode, which you soft click through, <clears throat> high mode, which in the Prion 2 is 192 lumens, which is just like, it's, it's pretty freaking bright when you consider it's just two AAA batteries, pen light, it's, it's awesome. Uh, point out on the P1s, high mode, an impressive 84 lumens for one AAA battery. It, it is, the 84, I mean, is not, you know, 192, just take what you will from that, 192 lumens, 84. It is not the power horse, but it is half the battery power. Um, they're both impressive. I, on a daily basis, will take the, the Prion 2. I, there, there, believe it or not, there were times when I'm on medium and, and this 26 lumen just isn't cutting it, and then boom, the 192 comes in to save the day. After high mode is stro mode. So to get the stro mode, you actually have to cycle through the low, medium, high twice. So you'll see what I mean. Low, medium, high, low, medium, high. And then before you get the low the third time, it goes into stro mode. So again, you cycle through low, medium, high two times to get the stro mode. So let's do it one. And then I'll, I'll actually hard click it this time. So that's low, medium, high, low, medium, high, and then on again before you get to low the third time, goes to strobe. And then after strobe, if you cycle through again, it goes to SOS mode, which I have never used, not one time, but it is cool function to have. So after the SOS mode is what they call a beacon high. So we're gonna go to what's beacon high, and what it does is it it blinks high, and every 10 seconds it will, as a beacon, flash high. And then the final mode after this beacon high is beacon low. On, on beacon low it shoots a lower lumen than beacon high. The advantage of the beacon low over the beacon high would be lasting longer. Where beacon high, if, you, if you're gonna retrieve the flashlight soon, beacon high would be easier to spot and then go grab your flashlight. Whereas maybe if you're stuck somewhere, tr hoping someone will find you, the beacon low would be more useful because who knows how many batteries you have with you and it's just gonna be a longer run time with the beacon low. So the Prion 1 has the same UI user interface as the P2, just the lumens are slightly lowered because it's running that one AAA battery cell. Low, medium, high, low, medium, high, strobe, SOS, beacon high, and then here's the beacon low. As you can see, all my prions have the clicky tail cap. I do prefer the clicky tail cap over the flat tail cap, even though the flat tail cap is more discreet and shortens up the overall profile of the flashlight. I prefer to click through the user interface instead of twisting the emitter head which is how you would do it if you were running the flat tail cap. So twist it off, which now is a good time to mention kind of a safety measure to shut off the light if you were throwing it in, in a backpack or something. Low, twist, medium, twist, and then high, right? Here's a P1 body that I don't use. I could totally throw a, you know, green flat tail cap on it. You know what, for this video, let's go ahead and do it. Let's just twist this bad boy on. Like I said, I'm always careful with the threads. That's what a flat tail cap looks like next to the clicky switch. 
I'm gonna take apart the tail cap for you just so you can kind of see the insides. So as you can see, you can twist off the whole clicky tail switch or the top has an additional piece that you twist off. And I've never swapped up the colors inside here, but I could totally put like a toxic green limited edition colorway tail cap, you know, this piece in there. Go ahead and show that off. Show off the clicky tail switch on my on the left and the flat tail cap on the right. Check that out. And then there's a little rubber guard, which can be removed. True story, I dumped this light in a pond. It was only about three feet deep and it was stuck on low mode. I could see the light in the bottom of the murky water. And I just took off my clothes right then and there, jumped in to retrieve the 4.7's Prion 2. That is how much I love this flashlight. Throw the 4.7's logo back on. I've never had any issue with the pocket clip. It's always been strong to me. The retention is really tight. This is all you're going to see. It's a, I wouldn't call it a deep pocket clip, but you're only going to see the end. It sticks out even shorter if you do have the flat tail cap. Look, that's all you're going to see sticking out of your pocket. So that's another benefit to the flat tail cap. So my Number one favorite feature is the variable lumen settings. My second favorite feature is just the overall slim, smooth nature of the pen light. I, as I said earlier, the new versions have those sub millimeter cuts or grooves. And I, I do plan to get one of those flashlights and I'm sure I will like the grooves, but I really like the smooth, the overall smooth appearance of these. Just a smoother looking light. I want to show you some cool color combos for EDC. So currently we're in summer 2017 and here is a rainbow titanium oxide Kershaw leak. I threw a stonewash blade on this titanium deep pocket clip. A little too vibrant for some but you can't deny it's thin. Lightweight. So I'll throw that with the P1, call it pink, I like to think of it as red, and then throw in my custom Ray-Ban Wayfarers, folding, of course, baby, yes. Look at that, look at that summer, whoa. Look at this color combo for summer 2017. I'll put a link for how I made these custom Ray-Bans right here. So then maybe, maybe that's too vibrant for you. I understand a little too much. Let me show you some more folding Ray-Bans. I just love these Wayfarers. Um, something a little bit more discreet. What knife should we go with? Um, well, we already know we'll go with the black. Let's go with the black P2. And oof, let's, there's, I have so many black knives to be honest with you. But because I have this one sitting right here, let's go with the Para 3, eh? Ooh, S30V. I didn't do a review on this, or did I? No, I didn't. Everyone knows it's, well, everyone knows the Paramilitary 2 is awesome, so everyone assumed the Para 3 would be awesome. I have a titanium deep pocket clip for the Para 3 as well. Full flat ground, S30V, spidey hole, compression lock, throw that down there and then so if that vibrant color combo wasn't quite your style maybe the all black color combo prions go good with anything man prions good for your EDC photos take a screenshot of that baby I love the four sevens prion so thank you four sevens for making a classic prion that I use every day in my office carry and uh, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video